In today's video, we're preparing for autumn. From harvesting the last of the summer's produce before the colder months set in, and maximizing this season's fruit, vegetables, and herbs by preserving, drying, and fermenting. Now is also the time where we'll transition our summer wardrobe to that of autumn. Organize, perhaps declutter, and assess which clothing pieces are needed for the season. For me, autumn is a time of creativity and personal growth. Therefore, I'll be embarking on new projects, learning new skills, and creating a plan for the coming months. The colder air also signifies the change in our desire for cozier, warmer, heartier meals full of seasonal vegetables, rich spices, and the soft, doughy feel of apple cinnamon buns. Welcome to the first installment of Cozy Season. So grab a cup of tea, give the video a like if you do like it, and subscribe so that you never miss another one. Let's get into it. So as you can see in the beginning of this video, the weather has definitely changed here in Denver and it's been very hot the last couple of weeks. So it's actually surprising that it came so quickly, but we're getting cooler weather. So I feel like it is time to prepare for autumn. I think the first frost is coming in maybe a month, maybe a few weeks. It's very hard to predict the weather here. It seems to change quite a lot. We have a lot to get done. I wanna do some things in the garden. We still have loads of tomatoes that are ripening and so many green ones. So I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do. I think I'll keep an eye on the weather and then if need be, I will pick the green ones and let them ripen on the windowsill or something like that. We're starting off by making some English muffins. I made some before, but they weren't quite right. So today I wanted to try a different recipe, try a different technique. And already I am so much happier with how these are looking and how the dough is coming along. Okay, so it looks like the English muffins are actually gonna take many hours to rise. So in the meantime, we're gonna get started on some of the preservation things that I love to do in autumn. So we need to go to the shop and get a few ingredients, but excitingly, we still have a few ingredients in the garden that we can preserve as well. So. I want to make another hot sauce, a fermented hot sauce like I did a couple of years ago. That was one of the best things I think I've ever made at home. We don't have quite enough chilies uh, homegrown this year, so I'm going to go and get some. And I also want to give you an update on the blackberry chung that I made. One person asked for an update and it's about time, I think. Honestly, it's one of the most fragrant and delicious things. I have ever tried. And I want to show you what I'm going to be using it for as well. I also want to restart my sourdough journey. So we're going to be starting our starter today. That might take one to two weeks to get going. It's quite warm here though still. So that might actually help make it go faster. But I also have the bread proofing box where the English muffins are currently proofing in. So that could be a really big help for the sourdough starter as well, especially just getting it started. Okay, I'm gonna get those ingredients and then we're gonna get started on the hot sauce first, I think. And the blackberry syrup. For this year's hot sauce, I decided to go with habanero and sweet peppers. Habaneros are some of my favorite uh, chili peppers because I like the spice level and also the heat is a really nice one as well. I went half and half with sweet peppers and habaneros. I also added lots of garlic and salt, water, and then I just put a weight on the top and I'm going to leave these for about seven to 10 days. Definitely going to be uh, opening them each day to make sure that they don't explode on me. Next, I decided to make a blackberry syrup drink and this is what I'll be predominantly using the blackberry chung for. I'm definitely still experimenting with different kinds of things I can do but putting this over maybe some vegan yogurt as well could be a really great way to use it or in other kind of desserts but it was absolutely delicious. Good morning, it is the next day. I'm actually even very pleased with how those English muffins turned out but I didn't realize that they were supposed to make like eight to ten and I only made six so they were definitely a lot bigger than they were supposed to be. I'm gonna try making them again but this time I am gonna roll shape them and then roll them so that they are still round without using a cutter because I don't have one and I don't want to buy one and uh, yeah that's mostly it. I just need to make them a bit smaller but I think I have almost nailed white 
English muffins. But I need to make the recipe again so that I can also get the wholemeal ones down because we prefer wholemeal English muffins. It just tastes better, you know? There's just more flavor there. There's just more going on. And they might be a bit better for you, who knows? I also got 20 pounds of soybeans delivered. I have been very specifically trying to find organic ones grown in the US and also grown in a state that's not too far away. Because I worked it out one time making your own tempeh compared to how much it costs to buy, even taking things into consideration like buying a starter, electricity in terms of if you're using a bread bin or an oven. Honestly, it's actually quite astounding how much cheaper it is to make it yourself. And honestly, it's not like sourdough. I personally find sourdough quite tricky and it takes a really long time. <laughs> Maybe I haven't found a good short version yet. I will because we always strive to learn more things on this channel. But I find tempeh, it does take a few tries to get right. It can be very frustrating, but that's one of the best things about fermentation and using, you know, the wild. And that's part of the fun, in my opinion. But now that I've got it down, like I know what I'm doing, and it is so fun and straightforward. Anyway, I've decided to start making things in smaller batches, so I'm gonna soak some soybeans now, and then uh, we will move on. Making a pumpkin curry. It's one of my all-time favorite recipes. I don't know why I haven't made it for like literally years, <sighs> but I can't wait to eat it. <laughs> Okay, so I just uh, finished making my sourdough starter. This is probably gonna take maybe two weeks. The house is generally between 66 and 70 at the moment. Hopefully it will not be too cold. Worst case scenario, I can put it in the bread proofing box, but right now that's got the tempeh in it, so it's a bit too hot. Anyway, I'm just making some coffee. I have the composting bin right next to the coffee machine so that the coffee can go straight in. The worms love the coffee. What a surprise. Kind of not a surprise that my worms would love coffee so much. But this is pretty full, so after I make my coffee, I'm gonna go take these out. And then I'll talk about a little project I'm thinking of doing for the worms, which will be in the project episode, which is coming next week. But I take my compost game very seriously. While it's still warm, I wanna get as much out of the worms as possible, give them lots of food to munch on. They've been re reproducing like crazy, so we actually have a ton of worms in there. I'm not even sure if that worm factory or bin or whatever it is is big enough for them anymore so go think about that 
as well. Also some other bugs have moved in, which is why I'm not bringing them inside during the winter, which is why we have to build that new project. But anyway, gonna make another coffee, take this outside, and then we're gonna get started on those apple cinnamon buns because I have been dreaming of those. And then Isabel Page uploaded some on Instagram today. I literally commented back saying, I need to make these immediately. So we need to make these immediately. <laughs> All of a sudden, the evening temperatures have dramatically dropped, and so the garden has decided that it's preparing itself for winter already. I'm just trying to get rid of some of the grapes that have fallen from the neighbor's grapevines because the bees absolutely love them, but they're everywhere, and I get so worried I'm just gonna step on one. These courgettes did not very well this year. <laughs> they didn't produce any, but uh, it was a nice experiment to see what was possible. I also decided that I really needed to trim down the tomatoes because I let them grow wild and it seemed to work in my favour because they produced an unbelievable amount of tomatoes this year. I still have a lot of green ones that I need to deal with and my mum actually gave me a tomato chutney recipe for green tomatoes today so I can always use that if these don't ripen on the windowsill. Thank you so much for watching and being here for episode one of Preparing for Autumn. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe so that you don't miss the next episode in Preparing for Autumn, where we'll be going through our entire closet and doing what needs to be done.